right, I want to go straight into the word of God. For a few moments, I want to address you on the subject, place and perception. Place and perception. In, in his sermon to the man of Athens, the Apostle Paul gives us a revelation of God's intent with geographical locations and metaphysical spaces. When God created mankind, Adam, the first man, uh, Paul says, he created out of him all the nations and he determined the exact times and places they would live. So it's not by accident that you are in Port Alfred in a time such as this. God knew that in 2023, you are going to be in Port Alfred. It's not an afterthought. It's not like, oh, you just came up with a plan and all of a sudden you found yourself here. God had predetermined. He knew that for a couple of years you were going to be in Joburg. And then at the appointed time, he was going to move you into a place called Port Alfred. And he did this with the intent that when you get here, you would seek him and find him. Now, whew, I feel something in this place. Now, what happens is God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He is omnipotent, he is omnipresent, and, 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 and God exists outside of time. So when God created the universe, he did not create it within the context of time as we know it. He created the universe out of eternity. So for God, there is no 2023. It's just, there is. It's, 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 he is the alpha and the omega. He's at the beginning, he's at the end. He is everywhere. So when we say God is omnipresent, we sometimes just think of him as in different locations. But God is in different time zones at the same time. I know I'm stretching your mind. But, but, but you have to understand that our God is way bigger than what we think. So God is present right now in 1880 as he is present in, I don't know, whatever year you can dream of. He is God who is not governed by time. So when he comes and he promises you something, he has already gone ahead in time. He's already there. He is where you are going before you even get there. And he is not only omnipresent and outside of time, he knows everything that's going to happen in between. So while you're trying to figure out what's happening with your life, it's kind of like I knew already. And, and so when I promised you something, I did not promise you uh, dependent, on, my promise was not dependent on what was going to happen. I knew everything that was going to happen, and I still promised. Uh, this is how big our God is. So Paul says he predetermined the exact times and places. Exact, exact. It boggles my mind to think that God in this very moment, he knew that Reddy is going to be in Jobek and I'm going to be here. It boggles my mind that he knows exactly what she's doing there and what, I, what, what I'm doing right now because he predetermined the times. Yeah, you predetermined the times. But the intent, this is what's important because we can get caught up, as scientists often do, in the times. We need to understand the intent of God. Paul says to the men of Athens, the intent was that men would seek him and would find him. In other words, God goes ahead of you. And gets into places that you are not yet there. And he hides himself in those places. So that when you get there, the intent is when you get there, you would seek him, though he is not far away from you. So God hides himself in plain sight. He knew that you need an encounter in Port Alfred and he hid himself somewhere in Port Alfred. And he says, when you come into the city, the intention is that start looking for me. 
start looking for me. Uh, you see, when, when you come into a place, you have to learn to look for the presence of God more than you look for the presence of the enemy. Some people come to church and they're looking for devils. And some people have built their ministries around just looking for devils. That's great. There's room for, for deliverance. But the intention of God was when you come into a space that he has created, you'd look for him. Where's God? Where's God? I, I, I know nobody in this town, but where's God? Before you look for your connections, before you look for a club, look for the presence of God. Where is God in this town? Ah, oh my goodness me, when God moves you into a new city, don't go, and, don't go sightseeing. First, get into that place and say, where is God in this place? Because God has already hid himself in the place. So when you are sightseeing and you are looking at nature... God hid himself in the beautiful nature of that place so that when you, when you say, wow, you say, God is good. When he moves you, so spaces are not just, spaces and places are not just geographic. They can be, they can be emotional places, physical places, spiritual places, financial places. Ah, he gives you a new job. When you, when you get into your office, don't look for the corner office. Look for the presence of Jesus. Where is Jesus in this place? Whatever space he allows you to enter, in that place, the intent was for you to discover the goodness of God. Ah, the problem is... The God of this age has blinded our eyes, more so the eyes of the unbelievers, that when they come into a place, they can't see God. That's the problem that Paul had with the men of Athens, because while they, they were seeing all these things, they could not see God. They were blinded by the God of this age. And it's said that some Christians will walk into a place and through unbelief will fail to see God. But they will see everything else but God. So the devil at his best has got a way of blinding your eyes. So that you fail to perceive the goodness of God. The Bible says he is cunning. He is crafty. He knows how to masquerade. You know how, he knows how to make things appear what they not. So... When, when he comes to you and he wants to destroy your life, he just needs to blind you from seeing what God is doing in the place that you are in. Ah. Uh, we were at a conference some time back, I don't, I don't know, maybe five, six years back, and we, that was my first introduction to uh, 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 Prophet Mangaliso. And we were having a conversation, and we're just we're having a conversation around the table. And he asks, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Port Alfred. He's like, wow, you are in that place where heaven is constantly open. And I'm like, what? He's like, do you know, he, his church, is, is, he runs a big ministry out of Bishu. He says, do you know that every time we want to hear what God is saying, we send our entire leadership to Port Alfred. That's what he said. It's like, we send them to spend a weekend in Port Alfred because there's open heaven. And I'm like, my goodness me. I was in a place where heavens are open and I did not know it. Because the devil at his best will keep you, Pastor Justin, focused on what is not working in your little four by four house. Amen. And this is breaking down. And the, 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 the main street is constantly dug up. And you, 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 you are constantly noticing what the municipality is not doing. Amen. That you fail to notice what God is doing. God hides himself in specific places. And he hides himself, the Bible says, so that we may seek him. 
and find him for he is not far from us. In other words, he doesn't hide so that you don't find him. Because sometimes we, we kind of go for years saying, I'm looking for God. No, God is hiding in plain sight. It's like when you play hide and seek with Tati. You don't go hide under that, that, that sound disc. She's not going to find you. She's going to run around the building and not find you, and then she's just going to give up. But when you play hide and seek with a child, you hide in plain sight. You hide with just like, can you see me? It's encouraging. And God says, that's, that's the way I hide from you, my children. I don't hide so that you don't find me. I hide so that I, I, I keep it interesting so that you keep looking for me and you keep finding me. Yeah. Ah, if, if your desire is to find Jesus, you will find him. He's not, he's not far from you. He's just, he's just hiding behind a little kabush so that you can see the rest of him. So, the devil, I don't want to magnify the devil, but I, wanna, I want you to understand what the Bible says, that he blinds, the God of this age blinds our eyes, especially the eyes of the unbelievers, unbelievers, those who lack faith. Devil is a master of illusions. He can cause you to see what is not there as though it was there. He's like a magician. So the devil knows how to make things appear in a certain way so that you can believe whatever lie he wants to give you. Ah, let me give you a good example. The other day the Lord was speaking to me and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know the enemy blinds. He's like, let me tell you that the enemy can blind you for 40 years. I said, speak to me, Jesus. And he started speaking to me a familiar story. You know the story of Joseph. You know how he was loved by his father Jacob. And then the brothers d came up with a plan to sell him, uh, first to kill him. And long story short, I have to fast forward the story. Judah said, let's not kill our brother. Let's sell him into slavery. But what we are going to do is we are going to take his coat of many colors. And we are going to kill a goat and take the blood from the goat and put it on the coat and bring it to our father and tell our father that your son has been devoured by a wild animal and is dead. And the Bible says that's what they did. And here's what got my attention. For 40 years, Jacob lived and believed that Joseph was dead. Optical illusion. They came up with a sign, the blood and the coat. And when, when, when he looked at it and he touched it, he says, for sure, my son is dead. And he wept and he was mourning. And, 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 and for 40 years, he lived with the loss of a son who was alive. And the Lord said to me, that's what the devil does. He comes to you and he lies to you. And he comes up with evidence to make it look so real. That you say, I saw that coat. I saw the blood. He's dead. But the truth of the matter is Joseph is thriving. Until one day, one day, Jacob comes face to face with his son. And can you imagine a man who has been weeping and mourning the loss of his son for 40 years because remember he loved him so much. Realizes that for 40 years I went through unnecessary heartache, pain just because the devil lied I wonder how many of you are going through unnecessary pain just because the devil lied to you. I wonder how many of you are not relating with so-and-so just because the devil caused you to see so-and-so in a particular light. 
Ah, place and perception. How you perceive a thing determines how you engage or interact with it. So places, as I quickly try and tie this thing together, places could be physical, geographical, they could be emotional, they could be spiritual. What place are you in right now? You see, Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Taste and see the Lord is good. That word taste is the word perceive. You must look it up in the Hebrew. It's the word tam, T-A-A-M. It's, 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 it means to perceive. So when he says taste and see, what he's actually saying is your perception is going to determine whether or not you're going to see the goodness of God. If you perceive correctly, you will see that the Lord is good. But if you do not perceive correctly, you're going to think God doesn't love you. Because your perception was wrong. How you perceive a place determines how you are going to interact. Have you ever been to a restaurant that you perceived to be a particular style of restaurant, and only when you get there, you're like, it didn't live up to my expectation. You see, what, what determines your experience at that restaurant is not the restaurant, it's your perception of the restaurant. I'm helping somebody. You can go with two people to the same place, and one who has the right perception is going to say, wow, what a great restaurant. This was good. But if you had the false perception or whatever expectation you had that created a perception and it wasn't the right one, your experience that night is going to be terrible. This was bad. This was not there. This was this. And everybody's like, what's the problem with you? It's your perception that determines your experience. Your perception of me is going to determine your experience with me. I've seen it. I go to conferences where I'm perceived to be one sent by God. People get the message. Where I'm perceived to be another Kunta Kinde who doesn't know what he's doing, people don't get the message. And it's, it's amazing for me after doing this for many, for many years, I realize that it's got nothing to do with me. I just have to say, God, you'd, I'm just going to be the vessel, same vessel. How they perceive or receive me is what's going to determine what they get. Now, let's get into our story and I'll conclude. Moses is now just about to send the children of Israel into the promised land. But before they can get into the promised land, he sends spies to go spy the land. To go and see if what God promised is true. So the spies left. They chose 12 spies. You know the story. And out of the 12, 10 of them. So you have 12 people walking around the promised land. They all saw what they saw. But when they came back to give a report, 10 of them, the Bible says they gave a bad report. They said this land... But what I like is the first, the first thing that came out of their mouth, they said, we saw that the land flows with milk and honey. We saw the grapes. And in fact, here is a taste of grapes as big as a man's head. They had the evidence. And they gave them and they tasted them. But when it was time to go and possess the land, they said, the land devours its people. Like, there's no way in the account where they saw anyone being devoured by the land. As a matter of fact, the fact that they are back is evidence that they were not devoured by the land. But somehow, their perception of the land is that, you know, while we were seeing grapes and everybody else was seeing milk flowing and honey everywhere, we saw people being swallowed by the land. Optical illusions. <laughs> hey, the devil at his best, while everybody else is seeing the goodness of God, 
They saw people being swallowed, devoured by, by the land. And so they came back and they gave a bad report. And, and the Bible says two of them had a different approach, Joshua and Caleb. They said, yes, we saw the giants. Yes, we saw that their cities were fortified. But while we were walking around the city, we saw hidden in plain sight our God. We saw the presence of God in the midst of the giants. So when everybody else was seeing a giant, we were seeing a giant slaying God in the land. So we, we are not here to tell you that there are no giants, but hidden in plain sight was the presence of the giant slayer. So even though the economy is bad, even though the situation is difficult in your municipality, Justin, hidden in plain sight is a God who has solutions for the problems that you are facing. So how you perceive this thing is going to determine whether or not you receive the full blessing that God has for you in the land. And so these two said, guys, excuse me. I, I, I know you saw giants. We saw them. But did you see God in the midst of the giants? We need to develop the ability to see God in the places he places us. Place and perception. In that moment, the enemy wants you to think your whole life is not working. No, it's only one little, little tiny bit of your life that's not working. And if you have the right perception, you can go through it victoriously. But if you have the wrong perception, you're going to magnify the problem. You're going to magnify the giants and fail to see the presence of God. So, I want to end by, by showing you something from this text. If you go, put up verse 33. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so were we in their sight. The Lord said to me, how you perceive yourself determines how others perceive you. They were not grasshoppers. But the Bible says they saw themselves in our own sight, not in the sight of the giants. No, no one giant came to them and said, oh, you small little grasshoppers. No giant spoke to them. They just perceived themselves as grasshoppers. And the Bible says, so we were in their sight. I often try and tell people this principle. How you perceive yourself determines how others perceive you. You walk in this room feeling sorry for yourself, everybody's going to feel sorry for you. And you're like, oh yeah, everybody's feeling sorry because you perceive yourself in that manner. The way you are perceiving yourself is causing everybody else to perceive you. You see yourself as a grasshopper, people start treating you like a grasshopper. In our own sight, so were we in their sight. These were people who were full of faith, walking with the presence of God, seeing themselves as grasshoppers. I wonder how many of you have allowed the enemy to tell you that you're a grasshopper compared to what you're going through. Because the moment you start seeing yourself as a grasshopper, the enemy will treat you like a grasshopper. But if you see yourself as a giant slayer, 
when you are the little cat and you see yourself as a lion. When you walk in the forest, there is a confidence about you that even the dog that wants to chase you is looking twice. Like, what, what's it with that cat? Because the cat is perceiving himself as a liar. And there's a boldness and a confidence that he brings into the place and the spaces that he finds himself that will cause everyone to respect him like a lion. How do you perceive yourself? Number one. Then how do you perceive the place God has placed you? Number two. Is it a land that devours its people? And here's the thing. Everyone that perceived the land as a devouring land didn't make it into the promised land. Because their perception robbed them of the promise. There's a great promise for you, but if your perception is wrong, you're going to rob yourself of the promises of God. Joshua and Caleb saw the presence of God and their perception gave them the boldness to step into the promised land and possess it. I heard the Lord say clearly to me that spiritual eyes need to be opened. We need to learn to see God for who He really is. No matter what situation we find ourselves in. God is not a healer just because you are healed. Even if you are not feeling well, if you perceive that He's always a healer, you are going to see healing. Wow, what a powerful word. We are so blessed to have such dynamic and anointed speakers here at Word of Truth Ministry. My name is Tenille Carter. And before we say goodbye, on behalf of our pastors, Justin and Reddy and Dora, I would like to thank you for tuning in to the Moment of Truth. It is our prayer that the message you have just received has not only blessed and encouraged you, but also challenged you to draw closer to Jesus. If the message left you feeling like you need more Jesus in your life, we are here to help you connect to Him. The Bible says that Jesus came that you may live and enjoy life to the fullest. So whether you want to give your life to Jesus or renew your commitment to Him, our church is available both online and in person to help you take the necessary steps towards a deeper and more meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ. So please feel free to contact us on the prayer line number on the screen right now. Please note that this is strictly a WhatsApp number and so only text messages and voice notes will be acknowledged. Finally, if you would like to listen to this message again, you can find it on our YouTube channel. All our social media handles should be on your screen right now, so please go ahead and subscribe, follow, and give us a like on your favorite platform. We look forward to hearing from you. Until next week, stay blessed.